my name is Sule and welcome or welcome back to the Little Reader's Corner. Today we have a book haul. This has been a very overdue book haul and I don't even know if I have all of the books that I have recently purchased within this book haul. So if I miss any, if any arrive in the next day, then that will just be a part of the next one. But I think I've compiled all of the books that I've gotten since the last book haul. But let's get right into it. Let's talk about all of the new books I have acquired. So some of these are from book subscription boxes. Some of these are special editions. Some are just new releases. Some are from little free libraries around my neighborhood. And I think that's everything. And I have read maybe about half of them. We'll see, let's talk. First off, I have, I think, the newest out of the collection of new books, which is The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. So you might know Shannon Chakraborty from her other works under the name Essay Chakraborty. And this is a very recent release that I have been waiting for, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get this also as a special edition in one of my book box subscriptions. I won't say which one, in case you also are subscribed and don't wanna be spoiled, but I'm pretty sure sure it's in one of them so I'm very excited about that because ah, I'm so excited to read this book anyways so this is a pirate adventure that takes place in the Indian Ocean so Amina al-Sarafi is the Indian Ocean's most notorious pirate she's survived backstabbing rogues vengeful merchant princes several husbands and an actual demon and now she's hoping to retire in peace and just enjoy the rest of her life However, that's not going to happen. She's tracked down by a very wealthy mother of a former crew member and is basically hired to retrieve her former crew member's kidnapped daughter. And that's where the adventure takes off. So it sounds great. I love her writing style and this just sounds like a great adventure that I cannot wait to start. Next up, we have Really Good Actually by Monica Hasey. Monica Hasey is a comedian and this is her debut novel. I was very excited to read this. I have since read it. I didn't love it. I have some mixed feelings about it. So this story is about a woman in, I think her early 30s. She is currently working on her PhD. She just started the beginning of a very messy divorce and she's trying to figure out her life, what she wants, what she's going to do now without this partner that she's had for so many years. She makes a lot of self-discovery, goes through a lot of messy situations. So knowing that, it was just, it was a little more messy than I was expecting maybe. There was just a lot of toxic thought patterns throughout all of it. And just for me, it took way too long for her to realize kind of what a terrible person she was being which like understandably so she was going through a lot of tough things but it was getting to about like the 90 percent mark of the book and she still hadn't really you know figured out that she had like really toxic behaviors that was really negatively affecting herself and others and none of those were really not exactly fixed but like touched upon towards the end so that just kind of uh, irked me but i really enjoyed the beginning and i loved what it was trying to do it just didn't really do that so next i have some special editions so i just got these four which are the last four of the once upon a book club book box bridgerton exclusive collection i had already purchased the first four which I don't think I've hauled. So let me get the first four first. Okay, so we've got the first four. So I'll go through these four first before I go through the last four. Basically, I now have a set of eight of these exclusive editions of the Bridgerton set. So I have read the first either two or three, I should check, of the Bridgerton books. Love the series, love the show. Second season is just beautiful piece of television. But I wanted to collect all the books so I can read them before watching the new seasons as they come out. And I saw this set and just absolutely fell in love with it. So I purchased the first half last year as a treat to myself. I was celebrating something, I don't remember what it was. 
and then I just purchased the second set as a treat to myself because I just discovered that I could walk in spring commencement with my entire graduate cohort, which I thought couldn't happen. So that was very exciting. Anyways, let's look at the actual books because they are gorgeous. Starting off with book number one, The Duke and I, I mean, look at that, it's absolutely gorgeous. Then we've got number two, which is The Viscount Who Loved Me. And then book number three, An Offer from a Gentleman. Book number four, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. And on to the second set of volumes five through eight, which I just got. So that is To Sir Philip With Love and When He Was Wicked. It's In His Kiss. And last of all, On the Way to the Wedding. Okay, so that's my Bridgerton set. Next up, I have two book of the month books. I resubscribed in order to get one of the books and then I forgot to unsubscribe, so here we are. So I got these two. First one is Georgia Along by Kate Claiborne. So I've been meaning to read this one. It sounds very cute. Basically, it's about a longtime personal assistant who made a career out of putting others before herself. Then sudden upheaval causes her to lose her job, so she goes back to her hometown um, to spend some time with her best friend. And then she stumbles across this old diary of hers from when she was a teenager with all of the possibilities that she imagined for her later life. She kind of starts off a new adventure based off of that. Then we've got The Cloisters. This is by Katie Hayes. This is about a woman, Anne Stilwell, who worked at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Then she finds she is assigned to Cloisters, a Gothic museum and garden renowned for its collection of modern art and enigmatic researchers. There she meets a group of really eclectic researchers and she indulges in their very outlandish theories um, which turns into academic obsession. Then she discovers her own breakthrough with the form of a cryptic deck of 15th century tarot cards and finds herself at the center of a dangerous game of power. So it sounds fascinating, definitely sounds up the dark academia route, so I'm excited to look into this one. Now we are starting into my special edition. These are, I believe, all from Illumicrate. Yes? Yes, these are all from Illumicrate. So first up was the reason that I started my Illumicrate subscription and I haven't looked back since. This is the exclusive edition of Babel by R.F. Kuang, or Babel, however you prefer. And it is gorgeous. The edges say the act of translation is always an act of betrayal. Beautiful, gorgeous. This was one of my most anticipated releases of last year. I am so excited to read it. I specifically, look at that, wow. I specifically have not started it. Oh my God, I mean, look at that. Oh, I specifically haven't started it because I am still currently in my master's program and I am just about two seconds away from constant burnout. So, a beautifully immersive story like this, um, I'm just not gonna be able to comprehend it in my brain right now. This is all academia right here, and I just, I can't, I can't slip into a beautifully immersive, fantastic world until I have a little bit more brain space to uh, understand what's going on. Otherwise, I will just miss entire concepts, and I've tried before, I've tried, it just, it doesn't work. So it's mainly gonna be contemporaries for me until I graduate. But anyways, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, it's dark academia. What more do you need to know? And I also have this edition, the regular UK paperback, which I got for my friend. And she got this for me for my birthday when she was in Paris. And I, I'm i just absolutely stunned and amazed that she picked the most perfect book for me and I was so excited. So it takes place in Oxford in 1836. A city of dreaming spirits is the center of all knowledge and progress in the world and it, at its heart is Babel, Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, the tower from which all the power of the empire flows. Orphaned in Canton and brought to England by a mysterious guardian, Robin Swift thought Babel was a paradise until it became a prison. How can a student stand against an empire? I just, I can't wait until I'm done with my degree and I can read this. <laughs> Next up, we have We All Fall Down by Rose Zabo. 
I don't remember what this is about. Um, where magic used to thrive and now is fading, the witches that once ruled alongside their powerful king have become all but obsolete. The crumbling government is now controlled primarily by a new university and teaching hospital, which has grown to take over half the city. Moving between the decaying old city and the ruthless new city, four young queer people struggle with the daily hazards of life, work, school, and dodging power-hungry cops and unscrupulous scientists. Blah, 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 blah. Mysterious death rocks their fragile peace and a deeper magical conspiracy. I haven't heard a lot about this one personally besides for the synopsis, so we'll see where it goes from there. I almost forgot to mention Sprayed Edges. Next up, I have God Killer. This is by Hannah Canner. Look at those edges. Gorgeous. I'm very excited to read this. I know Jade from Jade Juniper recently read this and loved it. You are not welcome here, God Killer. Kissin's family was killed by zealots of a fire god. Now she makes a living killing gods and enjoys it. That is until she finds a god that she cannot kill. A god of white lies has somehow bound himself to a young noble, and they are both on the run from unknown assassins. Joined by a disillusioned knight on a secret quest, they must travel to a ruined city where the last of the wild gods reside to each beg a favor. Beautiful, gorgeous, can't wait. This is short enough that I might even be able to read it sometime soon. It's like less than 300 pages, so there, there could be some hope there. Next we have The Whispering Dark. This is by Kelly Andrew. I'm very excited about this one as well. Though this is about Delaney, who's tired of being seen as fragile because she is deaf. So she was accepted to a prestigious program at a university that trains students to slip between parallel worlds. And she's excited for the chance to prove herself. But her semester gets off to a rocky start when she has an awkward encounter with a pretentious upperclassman who has every intention of keeping her distance. Colton Price was ordered to keep far away from the new girl and the voices that call to her from the shadows. But that proves to be impossible to ignore and you can't help but be fascinated by her unusual talents. After fellow students turn up dead, Delaney and Colton are forced to form a tenuous alliance, plummeting down a rabbit hole of deeply buried university secrets. Ooh, very cool. I haven't heard any reviews of this one yet, but it sounds amazing, so I can't wait. Next, we have another one that I'm very excited about, really want to read soon, and it's kind of semi-small, so there's hope. The Book Eater is by Sunya Dean. Now this, gorgeous, wow, beautiful, oh, I love it. And wow, second secret cover, who would have thought? Hidden across England and Scotland live six old Book Eater families. Last of their lines, they exist on the fringes of society and subsist on a diet of stories and legends. Children are rare and their numbers have dwindled, so when Devon Fairweather's second child is born, a dreaded mind eater, a perversion of her own kind who consumes not stories but the minds and souls of humans, she flees before he can turn into a weapon for the family or worse. Living among humans and finding prey for her son, Devon seeks a cure for his hunger. But time is running out, for her family want her back, and with every soul her son consumes, he loses a little bit more of himself. Ah, sounds fascinating and just creepy enough that I feel the intrigue, I feel the suspense, I feel the hunger, the need, but I don't think I will be terrified when reading this. Maybe I will be. But I feel like it toes the lines where I think I'll be okay. Stack of books is getting rather precarious. If these fall down, I'm gonna be very mad at myself. Next up, we have the Illuminaries. Now look at that, wow. This is by Susan Denard. Oh, and this one also has a fun little undercover. Look at that. I think some, some of the other ones might have also had undercovers. My bad, I'm doing my best out here. Um, and also sprayed edges. How fun. So I just got the ebook for this. So uh, maybe I'll start it sometime soon. We'll see how dense it is. But basically this is about Hemlock Falls, which isn't like other towns. You wouldn't find it on a map and your phone won't work here. The forest outside town might just kill you. So this is about Winnie Wednesday, who wants nothing more to join the Luminaries, which is an ancient order that protects the town and the rest of humanity. Basically, there are monsters and nightmares that rise from the forest of Hemlock Falls every night. 
But ever since her father was exposed as a witch and a traitor, Winnie and her family have been shunned. But on her 16th birthday, she can take part in the deadly Luminary Hunter trials and prove herself loyal and true and restore her family's good name or die trying. But in order to survive, she must enlist the help of one person who can train her, the resident bad boy. And together, he and Winnie discover a danger lurking in the forest no one is prepared for. Sounds fun, sounds like an adventure, it's beautiful. I can't wait. And last of the exclusive editions, I have The Drowned Woods, and this is by Emily Lloyd Jones. Gorgeous, beautiful, wow. Anything underneath? Of course there is, wow. And some, whoa, nice. Once upon a time, the Kingdom of Wales was rife with magic and conflict, and 18-year-old Myrrh is well acquainted with both. As the last living water diviner, she can manipulate water with magic, a unique elemental power that many would kill to possess. For years, Myrrh has been running from the prince who bound her into his service and, first, and forced her to kill thousands with her magic. Now all she wants is a safe, quiet life far away from power and politics. But then Murr's old handler, the king's spy master, returns with a proposition to bring down the very prince who abused them both. With the help of a fake cursed man, a snarky thief, and a corgi, she must decide if she's prepared to run for her life or stand and fight for her peace and freedom. Wow! Next I have this gorgeous, beautiful, Art of Onward book that I got from my friend Tasia for my birthday and it is just so beautiful and I just love the movie Onward so much and I got very much into how they made it and all about the lighting design and oh, it's just ah so this is everything I could want and more and it just goes into all the detail of how they planned out the storyboards and the actual mechanics of how they made the world and it's just ah! so thank you Tasia. okay coffee break yeah all right we've got a few more so I got these two off of Pango books where you can get used books for a much discounted rate from used booksellers you could go on there, sell your own books, buy some books. It's a good time. So anyways, I got these two. And I got them both when I was about 60% done with reading this one, Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dodd. And I was loving it and very much enjoying it, those first 60%. And I jumped the gun. And I really disliked the last 40%. So I ended up somewhere in the middle. I am really looking forward to reading another one because I think the problems I had with this one might have just been specific to this story because I love Olivia's writing. It's just the story that got me. Basically, this is about a fandom community and about a actor who stars in this super huge prominent TV show that is about Greek gods and legends. And then the other main character, she is a geologist and she's a huge fan of the show. And basically they're both part of this fandom community online where they write fan fiction and talk to each other, but neither knows the other one's identity. Then somehow they meet up in person and start dating and falling in love. One of them figures out that they actually know each other from the community and chaos ensues. That's, that's the basic plot. It has a lot of great plus size and fat representation, but the way that the relationship was handled just felt really toxic, even though she kept making it seem, even though the author kept making it seem like it was a very healthy relationship, it just felt so very manipulative at times which I don't know if that was the intention, but it was just stressing me out. And also there were all these inserts about the actual fan fiction that were just not my vibe. And some of it just felt so forced, like there wasn't really chemistry. It was just, it was bothering me. And I loved, I loved all the setup, but then afterwards when things were happening and when they were trying to resolve things and some things just felt unnecessary anyway. so. That was mostly problems with the actual story. So I am still looking forward to reading this next one, which is All the Feels, which it happens in the same universe where basically, I think the main guy, he was also in that TV show that was happening in the other book. Um, so he's one of the other stars. And I think this might be his assistant is the other main character. I'm not sure but they have kind of like a enemies to lovers thing going on, I think. 
So we'll see. I did like the writing style. It's just all the other things that bother me. So we'll find out. Next up, I just got these in the mail and they just came out and I'm very excited about it. So this one is the Adventure Zone and this is the 11th hour. So this is the fifth volume of the Adventure Zone. I have all the previous four. I love this graphic novel series so much. Basically, the whole premise is it's these three brothers and their dad who actually in real life have a podcast where they play D&D &D and they've been doing it for years and they have multiple different seasons where these characters that they portray in D&D go on adventures and then because the podcast became so popular they decided to adapt it into a graphic novel series about those characters and it is so fun i love the characters i love the adventures they go on if you enjoy graphic novels and if you enjoy fantasy you should definitely pick this up because it is such a good time and the scenarios and adventures that they go on are so unique and fun and it's a really fascinating blend of more like medieval fantasy concepts with more modern ideas like there is a fantasy costco at some point and it's just so good and hilarious and a, such a fun time so this one literally just came out like a week ago um at least when i'm filming this so i can't wait to read this one and next i got volume 10 of saga this has been a very anticipated release because um, the authors of Saga took a break in between volumes 9 and 10 and I know something major happens in volume 9. I think I've kind of figured out what it is and I haven't read it yet because I read volumes 1 through 8 very quickly and then it took a little bit until volume 9 came out so then I kind of wanted to start rereading the entire series to really feel the emotional impact because everyone was freaking out about volume 9. And I haven't reread them all yet, so I'm not gonna start this one or volume nine until I do a full reread. And yes, I will film the full reread, but it probably won't happen until after I graduate. So we shall see. But hopefully soon, definitely sometime this year, I can't wait to reread them and read the next installment. If you don't know what Saga is, it's a sci-fi adventure graphic novel in space where it starts off in volume one of a story of two people from completely different worlds whose species are at war, their planets are at war with each other, and they happen to fall in love and they happen to have a child. So basically both of their own people are coming after them to destroy this piece of hope that they've created for peace and existence across the galaxy. So they're being hunted down by just about everyone and there's a lot of different characters and people that kind of pop out throughout the series and the writing is phenomenal the art beautiful it's just a good time continuing on with the graphic novel theme i got these two now quite a while back but you don't know about it <laughs> so i got these sometime last year when i had some folks visiting me for the ala conference in dc so maddie from princess of paperback katie from katie's book nook and steph from shut up and read all came to stay with me for a couple of days during ala unfortunately i was so burnt out that my footage of that never made hit the internet even though i vlogged the entire thing and i had a huge haul but you'll never know. So that's really, that's too bad, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's a bummer. I'm still sad about it, but it is what it is. You can't control when burnout hits you. So anyways, so I got these two at a local used bookstore and I haven't started them yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. This is volume one and two. So this is about in a far distant future where the sun's premature expansion has irradiated earth, sending humanity to the lowest depths of the seas. Hidden within radiation shielded cities where probes score the universe for inhabited worlds. After tens of thousands of years, a single probe returns, crashing on Earth's surface, and now alien place no human has seen for millennia. The main characters must rise from the depths of man's despair and journey to the surface in search of salvation. The art in this looks absolutely gorgeous. Story sounds phenomenal. Can't wait to read it. Next we've got, I think, one and two. Yes, volumes one and two of Paper Girls. I've been needing to read this for a while. There are quite a few volumes out there. This is a very acclaimed series. It sounds really fun. It's basically about a group of newspaper delivery girls in 1988. 
They're all 12 years old and they uncover one of the most important stories of all time. There's suburban drama, supernatural mysteries that collide with nostalgia, first jobs, and the last days of childhood. This also was just adapted to a TV series. I'm pretty sure on Amazon Prime that I've also been meaning to watch. But first, I want to start with the origins and read the book. I will also be doing a video where I read these and then watch the TV show and kind of give a general sum of my thoughts and see how that adaptation goes, of course. No adaptation is ever going to be 100% faithful to the books because they are entirely different mediums. But I think it's always fun to kind of read the source material and then see what was adapted from there. Next up, we have A Psalm for the Wild Built. This is by Becky Chambers. My friend Jess recommended this to me and they really just struck it out of the water because this was absolutely phenomenal. It's very short, it's very comfortable and cozy. This is basically about a more futuristic society where it's been centuries since the robots of Panga have gained self-awareness and laid down their tools. Centuries since they wandered in mass into the wilderness and were never seen again. And they faded into the myth and legend that they are now today. One day, the life of a tea monk is upended at the arrival of a robot there to honor the old promises of checking in. This robot has one question, which is what do people need? But the answer to that question depends on who you ask and how, and they're going to need to ask this question a lot. So it's a really interesting look at the nature of humanity, at kind of the collision of wilderness and nature and technology. Also, the main character is non-binary, and this is just a beautiful, comforting story that really kind of brings forth a lot of fascinating questions about existence. Next, I have the Bromance Book Club, and this is by Lisa K. Adams. So I recently found this in one of the little free libraries in my community, and I am very excited because I've been meaning to read this. I know that Liv from Olivia Reads a Latte really loves this series. I think there's a couple in the series now. So I believe this starts off as a um, major league baseball player who starts a Bromance Book Club. He's very distraught at the current state of his marriage, um, possibly divorce and he finds help from an unlikely source, a secret romance book club made of Nashville's top alpha men. With the help of their current read, a steamy Regency novel, the guys coach Gavin on saving his marriage, but it'll take a lot more than flowery words and grand gestures for this hapless Romeo to find his inner hero and win back the trust of his life. So sounds fun, sounds like a good time. I've heard great things, can't wait. And then I recently picked up The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White in my local Goodwill. So I had this as a e-arc many a time ago and I DNF'd it within like the first 10 pages. I just kind of wasn't really intrigued. But since that, I've heard a lot of great reviews and I'm kind of intrigued to go back. However, I do want to read the finished copy in case there were any major changes between the e-arc that I have and this copy. I found it for a dollar at Goodwill, so I thought, hey, this is perfect timing. This is basically a retelling of Arthurian legend. It's a reimagining set in the magical world of Camelot where deadly jousts duplicitous knights and forbidden romances are nothing compared to the greatest threat of all, the girl with the long black hair riding on horseback through the dark woods towards Arthur. And since then, the sequel, uh, The Camelot Betrayal, has also come out. Next, I have Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. So this was one of my most anticipated releases last year, and I finally got to it January of this year. So. I was so excited to read this. I tabbed it up. This is just phenomenal. So it is kind of a time travel style book and it takes place in multiple different time periods and it makes sense later and it all kind of comes together to tell this one story. Also, you will notice that there is a lot of themes of the coronavirus pandemic in this, so if that's a trigger for you, that's an important thing to know going into this. So it's a novel of art, time, love, and plague that takes the reader from Vancouver Island in 1912 to a dark colony on the moon nearly 500 years later, unfurling a story of humanity across centuries and space. I'm going to leave it at that because it is fascinating to read this story without knowing the exact plot of it, which 
I recommend. Next I have The Glint of Lupin and this is by Sally Fang. So I just picked this up and I haven't heard anyone else talk about it. I recently discovered it and I am immediately intrigued by the synopsis. So I decided just to pick it up and give it a shot and I can't wait to see it what this is all about. So this is about a Chinese native living in New York and working on recovering her lost memory and finding her father. Along the way, she finds herself in the arms of the mysterious Suresh who supports her search in unconventional ways. Guided by Lupin, scattered remnants of recollections, technology, a little magic, and a secret society. She desperately clings to what she hopes will be the path of her truth. However, what if the truth lies far beyond the scope of human comprehension? What is the truth to begin with? So this is a mesmerizing web of a world that begins as a dream and unfolds in a journey for family, hope, and love. Sounds fascinating. I started the first few pages and thought that it sounded really interesting and like something I would enjoy. So. Hopefully I'll get you this one soon as well. All right, two more books and I promise we're done. We've got The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. I also got this on Pango Books for a great discounted price. Lovely, amazing, we love to see it. And I bought it the instant I finished it uh, from my e-loan, from my e-book copy loan from the library. And this was phenomenal. I loved it. This is basically about a personal bodyguard who is hired to protect a very famous actor. This is after the personal bodyguard has gone through a lot of intense personal tragedies and she's desperate to get a protection assignment that is outside of the United States and can distract her. And instead she has to stay near her home state of Texas and protect a very famous actor, but she is not expecting to start falling for him when they start doing a fake dating romance to disguise the fact that she is his bodyguard. So they pretend that she's his girlfriend while he's visiting his family to not stress them out that his life might be at stake. It's very cute, it's very fun, it's a very fast read. I loved it. And last, but most definitely not least, I have volume three of Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I forgot to include this in my exclusive editions section of this, but this is the third volume in hardcover and it is gorgeous. This is from Fairy Loot and I know that after I received it, we all got a notice that there was some kind of misprint in this and that we would be getting replacement copies which I'm very confused by because I've scanned through it and I don't see any mistakes. I might have just missed something completely, but who knows? I think it's fine. I don't think we need to get another copy, but whatever. So I love the Heartstopper series. If you haven't heard of it, there is a Netflix adaptation out now. It started off with the graphic novels. There are four graphic novels out, and I know that Alice is currently working on the next volume, which I think is the last volume. So beautiful, gorgeous, a good time. Those are all of my books, and I think I might have honestly probably missed a couple. Now that I'm thinking about it, I've definitely missed a couple because I just remembered that I got all of these. Shoot, I missed a few. Okay, we'll do this quickly. So I got these two copies of Sally Rooney's books, Normal People and Conversations with Friends. Normal People was adapted by Hulu as well as Conversations with Friends. You've probably heard of Normal People, maybe not Conversations with Friends. Both kind of like finding yourself new adult books. And then all of Taylor Jenkins Reads books. So I did have Forever Interrupted already and maybe in another life. However, these two I just purchased after I read the eBooks. So I luckily was able to get them in the old edition because I very much dislike the new ones. This is After I Do, which is about a couple whose marriage is falling apart and they decide to take a year apart and see if they can fall back in love after that. Very good. And this is One True Love, which is about a woman whose fiance goes missing and is presumed dead. She has to go through a long grieving process and figure out how to move on with her life after losing the true love of her life. Then she reconnects with someone from previous years from when they were back in high school and becomes engaged and falls in love and then they discover that her husband is actually alive and she has to figure out what to do when you have two true loves. 
good stuff okay now i promise i'm done thank you so much for watching if you made it this far please feel free to put a grape emoji why not a grape emoji down below if you don't have access to emojis feel free to just write grape and everyone else can wonder what the heck you mean by grape otherwise please let me know what book you recently bought that you're very really excited to read i would love to hear about it and love to add some new recommendations to my list but i will see you in the next one bye oh